Uh, you were down at Oregon Ducks Media Day, and you and I have talked about what to off off air about kind of what to expect with the with the Ducks. And a name that you've brought up more than a couple times has been Kenyon Sadiq. Uh, Oregon's offensive coordinator Will Stein also has been talking about uh, Kenyon Sadiq and kind of what what you could expect uh, from Kenyon this year. We want to get him the ball as many ways as we can, and early in camp. We're really just trying to reinstall our base offense. But as we get closer to game weeks, um, he's a guy that we want to personnel specific plays for. Um, you know, there's been different guys across the country over the years that have been unique like him. You know, I think about the kid that just got drafted from Georgia that um, is with the Raiders now. Like, I'm not saying Kenyon is Brock Bowers, okay? He's not there yet, but he has all the skills to be a player similar to him um, in terms of true tight end play out of the backfield, flexed. So excited about where he's going. And I mean, he's he's had a great summer, great spring. You know, what's interesting is, I when it comes to Pac-12 football over the years, there have been some really good tight ends, but I just don't associate the, the Pac-12 offenses for whatever reason in my head with the the unique kind of tight ends, even though there have been plenty that have come out of here. Well, Stanford, Oregon State, mm-hmm. and Oregon have all produced a, quite a few yeah, tight ends, and then even Arizona State with guys like Todd Heap. I mean, historically, mm-hmm. it has been it's a, been a good conference, a very one. good tight end conference. And, and yeah. I don't know why it doesn't transfer in my head. Maybe it's just because Iowa just produces so many yeah. by themselves for sure. And Miami, I think those are the kind of the two I think looked at historically kind of tight end schools, but. It's going to be interesting because of with Oregon, you have so many weapons that are different from what I think the stereotype of an Oregon weapon has historically been over the last fifteen years. I, Kenyon Sadiq is just different, mm-hmm. and look, he, Will Stein brought up Brock Bowers, and you know Kenyon Sadiq is not Brock Bowers in in some of the measurables there because you know Bowers is like 6'4" 240. Mm-hmm. It's Kenyon Sadiq is probably hovering around like 6'2" <laughs> probably about 230. They have him listed right as 6'3" 235. Yeah, I I'd so. say he's probably about 6'2" 230. I mean, he's not going to wow you with his height or his his size, but when you look at Kenyon Sadiq, his trunk is Huge. His legs are tree trunks. Just, just say he is it. a strong human. Just being. say it. Got man's man's got. He's caked up. Yes, he he he's he definitely up. is. But with with the crossover and the translation to Brock Bowers and how you can use Kenyon Sadiq, I mean, this is a guy that last year people were raving about him behind closed doors down in Eugene all throughout training camp and throughout the season. There was the learning curve that comes with with college football, and he did still produce at times at Oregon last year. This year during spring, I was saying it during spring ball, the practices that I went to, the scrimmages that I went to, and when you saw him flash it in the uh, spring game, he is a weapon and a playmaker like we have not seen. There was a picture that came out of a scrimmage uh, in the spring where he jumped, like he hurdled the uh, defense back on the sideline. Mm-hmm. It was in stride, didn't hesitate, just went bloop right over the top. He is a twitchy athlete mm-hmm. at six. And that's where it kind of translates to what Brock Bowers it's and the, what he the has tweener. the ability to do is he has the twitchiness mm-hmm. to be an explosive playmaker on the outside. You can use him in line as a tight end with the hand in the ground you're going to use him as kind of that 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 nub back where you can use him on on the end off the ball kind of in that wing position oregon did show it in the spring game a little bit that they're going to go under center at times and think about where oregon has kind of been building at this point where you have terrence ferguson who is the tight end who rightfully so should get a lot of that the um, eyes and attention sure. in that tight end room because I, th- I keep going back to that game against Stanford where he went up high pointed the ball in the end zone. It was just like n- nobody else making that yeah. play. He is a guy that he's tight end one. Then you have Patrick Herbert, who's been a veteran, gone through injuries, who is more of an inline type tight end mm-hmm. as well. But then you have the tool guy like Kenyon Sadiq where 12 and 13 personnel 
like Oregon is going to the Big Ten, and you've said this before, mm-hmm. like in the trenches where they've gotten a lot bigger. Well, they're going to be able to flash. We have Big Ten personnel as well. Yeah. In going 12 and 13 where you have one back in, in two or three tight ends, that is something they're going to have the ability to do, and I wouldn't be surprised we see it, and we see it quite a bit. Get weird. I want to see some flex bone. The thing about, guys, if you roll out an offense where you have Terrence Ferguson and Kenyon Sadiq on the field at the same time, what are teams going to do personnel-wise? Because you can't afford with those two guys to bring in a heavy personnel because then what Oregon will do is they will shift out, and then all of a sudden you will have – you could have Terrence Ferguson can line up outside, he can line up inside, Sadiq can do the same because Mm -hmm. they're they're, – the match of size and speed that those two guys can provide for you. But then if you want to go with your light personnel, you want to stay nickel and you want to have a a fifth corner in, well, guess what they're going to do? They're going to put you in a box. They have confidence that both those guys can block. And with a guy like Sadiq, if you have Ferguson as a tight end and behind him as a wing is Kenyon Sadiq, all of a sudden then you have the ability to motion him around. You can create leverage in your in your offense formationally, but then also handing the ball off to him in a counter. Right, motioning it around in an orbit motion and running an option with him on on the outside. These are all things that they could potentially do with a guy like Kenyon Sadiq mm-hmm. because he has the the pairing of size and speed to go along with it. I've been trying, to, you know, I was kind of sprinkling out there. Watch Kenyon Sadiq. Mm-hmm. Watch Kenyon Sadiq. We went into media day last Monday, and what he was able to say, like what in what everybody was saying about Kenyon Sadiq was, yeah, he's going to be the real deal this year. Yeah. Like, players weren't – they weren't hiding behind it anymore. And you hear Will Stein right there. He did make it very clear. I want to make it clear. He is not Brock Bowers yet, but he has the ability to be that kind of weapon he's where not you can a, he's use He's not a you know, top 15 draft pick. In a variety of ways where he is in line, in the slot, and as an outside receiver. Kenyon Sadiq is a name that people need to familiarize their, themselves with if you don't know him already because – he has been making waves at Oregon camp and throughout spring ball and all throughout last season as well. He is going to be a player for them. And look, this is where you sit there and you go, they've built themselves to be one of those teams that contend in a variety of ways with a variety of different teams and styles. You, you have to have the ability to change up stylistically for as much as you, the Big Ten wants to play in a phone booth. Sometimes you need to be able to find that mismatch. And in the NFL, finding that mismatch is, is a little bit more difficult because you, you've got the cream of the crop. But guess what? If you get late into a game and all of a sudden you got guys who are tired or guys who are injured or guys who are beat up and you get caught with the wrong personnel out on the on the field or you get caught in a late switch or a situation that that Oregon schemes up and all of a sudden Sadiq is stuck on a or, or matched up on an inside linebacker and they put him out and now you go have fun and I think those are the kind of situations those are the situations when you can find those opportunities that aren't going to be there otherwise. I do believe that what they're going to try to do with him is because when he is on the field, you can't go heavy personnel. Mm-hmm. That's where they're creating mismatches. Yeah. But, and I don't, I don't think defenses are going to approach him by going, all right, we're going to go heavy personnel here because you may have two or even three tight ends. If Herbert's on the field as well, this you, is where you need those tweener. You can't have linebacker a, safeties. You can't have a heavy personnel on the field because they'll just they, all three of those guys can split out yeah. and be effective receivers as well. And that that's a terrifying prospect. And I think that's the thing I'm most excited about with this Oregon offense is you have blended size and speed in your recruiting, where you have physicality with receivers like Gary Bryant Jr., like Jurion Dickey, Kyler Casper, Treshawn Holden. Those are the more physical style receivers mm-hmm. that you will see. But you have speed receivers like Evan Stewart, Tez Johnson, to where whatever matchup the game will dictate, you can play alongside that. You can play in a phone booth. You can spread out and run. No matter the matchup that you will have, Oregon has kind of built this offense to be malleable to whatever the game will dictate. And I think that every team in the country, you want to dictate pace, you want to dictate style of play, but sometimes you just, whether it's weather, sometimes you get dinged up, you've got to be able to pivot and pivot in a hurry. And we saw this with Oregon teams of the past. Where would they have troubles against the Stanfords and Utah? 
they could play with USC. Mm-hmm. They could play any type of, a type of speed football, but it was where is that curveball going to be thrown? And like a lot of those Arizona State teams and Arizona teams that gave Oregon problems when they go down to the desert late in the year, it was because they would play a more physical brand They'd of football that fight. Oregon wasn't quite ready for at that time of the year. They have the ability now to transition in and out of finesse and physicality, and Kenyon Sadiq's going to be a big part of They can of that play in the track year. meets and they can play in the mud. That's the thing. In the Big Ten, to me, as much as everybody's talked about Oregon, Washington, USC needing to adjust, I'm really interested to see how the Big Ten adjusts to them, early, particularly early in the season before the weather gets sideways, to dealing with speed on the edges. Yeah, I think that Ohio outside and Michigan, of Ohio, Ohio State yeah. and Michigan, um, they're all going through that same thing with those two programs. Mm-hmm. I think it's very similar uh, to – Ohio State and Michigan and the issues that they that they give. So they've been trying to figure that out for a couple of years yeah. now. Um, but uh, I'm with you. I think like the Illinois and Purdue's are just going to be like, okay. But so is UCLA. Yeah. I mean, UCLA, they're going to be doing the exact same thing, going like, oh, I have no idea what's going to yeah, happen. Bar two was not, uh, not too kind to them yesterday. Yeah. Another guy that I've I've been praising for a while, and I'm glad that he, he got a little love from Junior Adams the other day when Junior Adams, wide receivers coach, had his – uh, press availability. Justice Lowe, the product out of Westview High School, mm-hmm. who's down there. He or Lake Oswego, I think, is where Justice went to. Um, he's a guy that he's gonna he, he's gonna find his way on the field. He's just a sophomore, but a redshirt sophomore this year. He is between the years. He's one of those heady receivers that mm-hmm. is everything's kind of starting to slow down for him. Um, and I, I was I was glad to hear um, Junior Adams talking about Justice Lowe the other day. And that goes back to, I said this before camp, as we were talking over the summer, Oregon is eight or nine deep with pass catchers this year. Mm-hmm. And that is maybe the first is, time ever. Well, that is the first time ever. <laughs> but there's very few programs that around Ever the country that, that yeah. you can sit there and you can say, we have eight or nine guys we feel confident can go huh. out there and and give us snaps and again it's the variety that you have with those eight or nine yeah they're not going to be all of them aren't going to be useful week in and week out but you have the ability to match up with whatever's being thrown at you and it's, it's again it's the styles make fights